Welcome back to VL Speaks with you. I am Birna Lisa, and this is episode 15. We're in the middle of July, and it is summer, full on, hot, humid, sticky, smoky, everything, all the things. It seems to be that way in a lot of places here in the States. So what am I going to talk about today? Well, I've got a couple of things that I'd like to invite you to be on the journey with me on. Okay. So the first is that this is supposed to be plastic free July. Right. You're thinking, how is that possible? Well, with the way that things are, we can do the best that we can to buy things loose and not packaged in plastic, and also to make sure that we're doing our best to recycle and reduce and reuse. So I'm on that kick. I'm always on that kick and brighten it even a little bit harder this month. That being said, the real challenge here is actually a challenge to your health. I decided in the beginning of July that I was going to do a cleansing. Now, I do these periodically throughout the year and to varying degrees. This isn't going to be like a shock your system kind of a thing. That wouldn't be a kind thing to do to you or to myself at this point because I can't handle it. I got too many things on the plate. And so do most people. Most people have full plates. So this cleansing period, while I have dedicated myself to the entire month for it and may even continue afterwards, you can do it for a couple of weeks, see how it works for you, but I definitely implore you to give it a shot. So what do I mean by cleansing? Well, I just mean little things that you can do throughout your day, adjustments in the decisions that you make that are going to help to kickstart your metabolism, not for the purpose of dieting, we're not even going to go there, but for the purpose of alleviating stress on your own body, especially your internal organs, like the liver, the pancreas, your bladder, your kidneys. All of these organs love when you do a nice mild cleansing. And sometimes, depending on how gunked up you are inside, you may need something a little bit more intense over time for an extended period of time. But this cleansing, th these ideas that I'm going to be passing on to you may seem really common sense. But when you put all these things together, it makes a difference. It makes a bigger impact on your life. So in my first episode, I talked about regulating your sleeping and your waking habits and your body's ability to clean itself out properly because it wants to do that, right? Our bodies are built for that. The organs are certainly are. So the first thing you can do is in the morning, drink your eight ounces of filtered water. And I'm going to bump that up to 16 ounces because it's hot out. So we're probably losing more water than we think we are just by virtue of the heat and being out in it. Even when you're home, it is hotter uh, in general. So bump that up to 16 ounces and do your best to make sure that it is filtered. Reverse osmosis if you can get it. Drink it at room temperature and let that be the first thing that you do in the morning. Okay, if you want to add on to that, you can do some hot water with lemon, honey, and salt. And let it cool down if you want to. Drink it at room temperature because it's hot outside. And then if you really want to bump it up, one of the things that I'm doing, and I do this periodically throughout a month, and then this month I'm doing it every morning, which is taking an organic orange. I do my best to buy organic produce all the time. Organic orange, organic turmeric, ginger, garlic. It's about an inch size of the turmeric and ginger peeled, one clove of garlic, one to two tablespoons of olive oil, about eight ounces of chilled filtered water, and then some maple syrup for taste. And that's about 16 ounces of fluid. Take that back, and then I add some more water to the mix. And then from there, I go on to do a whole other retinue, which I do normally every day anyways. But the important thing is, is the decision of what to eat when you're on a cleanse. So what do you go for normally when you're going to have breakfast? Is it coming out of a box? 
are you going somewhere and getting it and it's overly processed and full of sugar and God knows what else? Do you know what the ingredients are of what you're about to eat? That's where a cleansing takes on a whole new life of its own. You start asking yourself about the question. You start asking yourself questions about what it is that you're about to eat and what's in it. So on a cleansing, what I say is make sure it's 100. Is 100% 100 real food. It's as close as possible to its original state that you could possibly get, like a whole apple, you know, or a beet, or a cucumber. You see what I'm saying, okay? The cleansing is about keeping it as clean as possible in the food department. And I'm not saying that every meal is going to be that way, but make your biggest meal the middle of the day and look at the food that you're eating. Now, a lot of the times when you are eating, you're being compelled to eat based on maybe a craving, a habit that you have created where you think that this is comfort food because this is what you've turned to in the past. And keep in mind that processed foods, the way that they're created, they actually create cravings, okay? And the nutritional value is questionable. Even more so is, it, does your body know what to do with this stuff? Does it know how to digest it? Does it know how to break it down? Is it just going to keep whatever's left over of this unknown entity in the food stuck somewhere in your intestines or in your liver or in your fat cells? Okay. These are the things that you start to think about when you are doing a cleansing. So the simple thing to do is keep it simple. Keep your food simple and keep it real and whole. Okay, Because think about it. If you're eating a really heavy meal, even if it's real food, but it's heavy, okay, and it's an animal-based product, that's harder on your body to break down, especially in the evening when what it really wants to do is to be repairing from everything that happened during the day and resting. It can't rest if it's digesting an incredibly huge meal. So that's something to keep in mind. And this is one of the rules of thumbs in cleansing is that you're keeping it simple so that your body gets a break, it gets rest, and you can focus on what it is that you want to be doing, which is regenerating the body. That's part of what cleansing do is it helps the body to regenerate itself. Now, if you're a young buck, you're like, I can eat that. I can eat that, you know, those three hamburgers, no problem. I'm going to pound them out. I'm going to burn off all those calories. That might be the case. But if this is a habit that you decide to bring with you into the rest of your life, let me tell you something. As you age, things get harder to do and the body, take, the body takes longer to repair. So keep that in mind when you are developing habits. Now it is summer. There are barbecues. I don't know about on a day like today, but there are barbecues and there are beach parties. And so at these parties, there's all kinds of food. And let's face it, you know, the serving size on a potato chip bag is not realistic. It's just not. You can never just have nine. Who does that? I've tried. It's like, oh, I'll just have a few more. Yeah, it doesn't work. And on top of the food, then you also have alcohol. Now, alcohol is heating, okay? That's an effect that it has on the body and its physiology. On top of the fact that it's taxing to the liver and the pancreas. Now, yes, of course, you're on the beach and you have an ice cold beer and it feels like you've just quenched your thirst, which in fact you have not, but it feels really good and it tastes amazing. If you're having one, if you're having four or five or six, in the heat of the day, what do you think that's doing to your body? I think that you know. I think you know the answer to that. You think your body's super happy about it? Probably not. Are you listening to what your body's saying? I don't know. You tell me. Or you tell yourself. Be honest with yourself about it. But it's very easy in this heat 
to kick back some cold drinks, right? Cocktails, some ice cold Sauvignon Blanc. You know, it could be anything alcoholic and it gives you a little buzz, but just keep in mind that it's dehydrating and it overheats the body and it's more work for your organs to deal with. So if you're cleansing, is alcohol really going to be part of the menu? Now, I'm not saying that you can do it for a whole month. Maybe you're just not willing to make that kind of a commitment. It's your body. You do what you want. I'm just saying, maybe you start practicing a little bit moderation. Moderate your senses and go, hey, you know what? Okay, so normally I would, you would say to yourself, I'm going to have four beers. Maybe not have four beers. Maybe you have one. Or instead of having five glasses of wine, maybe you have one. See what I'm saying? Spirits, that's an even heavier alcohol. And if you build up a tolerance for that, you don't even realize that you may have had three or four vodkas. It happens to people, okay? What do you want to do about that? You can answer that question. But a cleansing can help you reboot and restructure some lifestyle patterns. I have been through all kinds of cleansings. I have done intestinal cleansings, numerous intestinal cleansings in the past decades, liver gallbladder cleansings, and kidney bladder, kidney and bladder cleansings. Those types of organ cleansings absolutely require that your intestinal tract is clear first. Otherwise, you could be reabsorbing more toxins and that is no fun. And you'll feel sicker and you'll say, oh, this is not working. Well, you didn't do things in the right order. You got to clear out the intestinal tract first. And of course, whatever protocol you're using, please vet it out. Don't just pick anything because you've seen it. Vet it. Do your research, okay? Anything with like digestive enzymes and probiotics, they're not all made well. They're not all made from great products or ingredients. Do your homework before you start ingesting these kinds of things, okay? Start simple. Start easy. You can build on those things later. And what you're going to notice is, is that from doing this type of a cleansing, Reducing or eliminating alcohol for a time, reducing or eliminating animal products like meats and processed meats and um, processed dairy products that are massively produced. I'm not talking about your artisanal um, and grass fed, organically <laughs> taken care of, no GMOs, no antibiotics. Those are all very good criteria for animal products, but just Reducing the intake, increasing the efficacy, increasing the, the level and the quality of your food, number one, and then reducing the amount of animal products for a time in addition to processed foods, in addition to alcohol. Reducing all of those things and putting them on the back burner for a while and letting your body recalibrate, setting up a new homeostasis, a healthier one. And then see what you feel like having. You're going to probably notice that your mind is a little bit clearer. You're feeling more relaxed and at ease. You're sleeping better. Your skin looks better. Your nails look better. You're feeling more energetic. These are little things that you're going to notice from cleansing. Even if it's two weeks. And then you can decide, what do you want to bring back into the mix? How much do you want, of it, you want to bring it back? You know, moderation in all things. It's wonderful to enjoy a nice glass of wine, especially when it's really good wine. I'm not saying it has to be totally expensive, but something really good. You know, something for a special occasion. Moderation. But if you don't have moderation in your life and you know deep down inside, uh, you got to do some kind of a kickstart here to change things. A gentle cleansing is a good way to go, empirically speaking. 
So I hope this is helpful and maybe motivated you and inspired you to listen a little bit to go, hmm, what can you do differently now and alleviate the heat? I hope that it's done something for you that's worthwhile. Thank you for joining me again. And I will see you next time. Stay cool, stay dry, and take good care of yourself. Ciao.